Alrighty guys, if I sound like shit it's because I just woke up, but I've got the tier list for the Variant Scythe Blood Arts and God Eater 2. Probably my most used weapon in the game, so without further ado, let's get into it. First up is Phantom Razor. It's a light attack combo and essentially the vanilla barrage move for the scythe. Some extra golden blade trails follow each weapon swing for more ticks of damage. It doesn't really do anything else, it's not bad, but it doesn't really excel at anything either. C tier. Willow the Wisp Cutter is similar to Phantom Razor, but the aura kind of just sits on the blade, so its range is essentially identical to your normal swings. It does have an elemental boost, however, so that's nice. B tier. Gusty Edge is kinda like Willow the Wisp Cutter, but without the attribute bonus. Your character also jumps around during the combo, and while it does look cool, it also makes it a lot less practical to use during fights. If you need to focus the scythe on a specific weak point, this is not the art you want to use as you'll probably spend more time repositioning yourself than you will actually landing hits. I can really only recommend this if you're about to fight an Aragami that moves around a lot or one that has weak points all over its body. Or if you intend to break the bonds with a gun and then use melee attacks. D tier. Turbulence is a light attack combo finisher. Instead of your character doing their fourth hit, they'll stand in place and start twirling the scythe in their hand, and you can keep this up as long as you keep pressing square, provided you don't get hit. It doesn't have any bonuses, but you can still use it to get some good damage in if the origami is downed with broken parts, and it also looks very nice. S tier. Executioner Chop, a light combo finisher. This one has you quickly jump up and swipe vertically at the origami. It also has a downed bonus. This one is actually really useful for catching hard to reach areas on large origami like high swinging tails or heads. The aforementioned bonus makes it even deadlier. S tier. Soul Devourer and Shearing Scar. These are pretty similar, so I'm kind of grouping them together. Both are heavy attack combos. Soul Devourer recovers more OP with each hit, while Shearing Scar does bonus damage to weak points. I'm kind of torn because while I find Shearing Scar to be the more useful of the two, unless I'm running a gun-based build. Soul Devourer does look way cooler. The indigo-colored weapon streaks really drive home that Grim Reaper feel better than the gold does. Regardless, B tier for both. Surprise Attack. The only step attack art for this weapon. Your character dashes forward, and if the initial swipe lands, they'll deal a second, stronger hit. It has a weak point bonus, but I didn't find this one to be all that useful. Scythes kinda suck in the air, and yes, this is foreshadowing some things to come, but for now, D tier. Mad Orbit, a light aerial combo. Essentially just your standard three hit midair combo, but you can chain it twice in a row. It gets the job done if you're reaching for a high up weak point. I actually think it's the best aerial art for this weapon, B tier. Spinning Pendulum is an aerial heavy attack that has your character spin vertically up to four times. I'm not too fond of this one. The hitbox is a bit lower on this than you'd expect and well, there isn't much else you'd use this on unless you were aiming for a tail, or maybe the origami is flying. Though seeing your character just sitting there spinning is kind of funny to look at, so I'll give it a C tier. Windmill Drop is kind of similar to the previous one, but it has your character lunge forward and then hit the ground when they're done. It's still prone to missing just as much as Spinning Pendulum, and there's no funny animation this time either. D tier. Savage Bite is a fang deployment move. Keep in mind that anything that affects fang deployment applies to both the round fang and cleave fang moves. Anyway, a blood red aura surrounds your blade and you deal a little extra damage and the stamina cost is reduced. There's nothing really that special about this move though. C tier. Glutton Fang, basically just a golden savage bite. It implies a stamina recovery effect, but I haven't really seen it do that myself. D tier. Death Harvest is a round fang art. Now, the round fangs are different because it only applies to the round move and not the cleaving finisher. It's still not amazing, but I do find it a bit more useful than the last move. C tier. God Razor is another round fang art, quote unquote. You're actually swiping in front of you. The projectiles do add some good range and it can be nice for hitting hard to reach spots. A tier. Mortal Divide, this is a cleave fang move, meaning the art applies to the finishing hit where you reel the scythe in and not the round attacks. Anyway, your character brings down the scythe, a cool looking pink aura engulfs it, and then you reel it back in for an increased OP gain and bonus damage to weak points. S tier. Harvest Fang is another cleave fang move. It kinda looks like Mortal Divide, but it's bright red with a lifesteal bonus. I guess it's good if you're on a long survival mission and you're low on items, which could happen often in this game to be fair considering how many survival missions are in it, but it isn't going to be very useful if you're, you know, 
already good at the game and not taking hits. Regardless, B tier for the added utility and how much it can help newer players. Circular Fang. Technically a Cleave Fang move, but I do use that term very loosely. So when you activate your Cleave Fang, your character actually picks the Scythe back up and goes back into a Round Fang. I mean, it's an alright art and it still does extra damage and stuff, but like, why? D tier. Blood Drenched Fang. Now we're getting into the two black arts. This one is basically a fang deployment move that drains your HP on startup. Keep in mind, it only sucks your HP down when you activate it, not with each hit. So you don't have to worry about draining your HP down to one unless you get interrupted a bunch of times. And the damage increase is well worth the cost in my opinion. S tier. Execution. This is the second black art. So this is a cleave fang move, a golden lightning looking aura surrounds the blade and it deals insane amounts of damage when you reel it back in. The only catch is it has a much tighter window than the other cleave fang arts. You pretty much have to time your input damn near perfectly to get it to land. Some people said, you know, pay attention to the yellow circle around the character and when it overlaps their body then you press the buttons. Others said, wait for the scythe to drop and then press. I didn't find these all that useful though. There was one video in particular though that said wait for your character to kick upward and then reel it back in, and this worked the best for me, I could land it around 70% of the time. I'll give it an A tier, I can't really give it S because of how literally hit or miss it can be, and if it's giving it too much trouble you can always just use Mortal Divide. It's weaker, but I feel like being able to land it will actually make up the difference in damage. So yeah, like I said, A tier. And that's it, all the variant Scythe Blood Arts ranked. I know I did the last one like forever ago, and I honestly think it's because I'm finally losing interest in this game. <laughs> anyway, I'll try and get the God Eater 3 counterpart done soon, but for now, leave a like if you enjoyed it, sub to the channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all again very soon.